Welcome to the Merton Heritage Alphabet, an A to Z of our borough's colourful past. Our next letter, W, is for Wilberforce. Born in 1759, William Wilberforce was from a wealthy Yorkshire family. His grandfather made his fortune from trading in the Baltic and served twice as mayor of Hull. William's father, Robert, was also a successful merchant. A sickly, delicate child, William was initially educated at the grammar school in Kingston on Hull. When his father died in 1768, young William was sent to live with his uncle William and aunt Hannah. The family divided their time between their home at near St James's Palace and Wimbledon, where they purchased a grand villa known as Lauriston House. Whilst living in Wimbledon, William was educated at a boarding school in Putney. This he considered a most wretched little place which taught a little of everything. During this period, William had his first major religious experience influenced by his aunt, herself a staunch Methodist. Hannah was a follower of George Whitefield, who converted many rich London merchants, including her own half-brother. Alarmed by the non-conformist sentiments expressed in William's letters, his mother and grandfather took him back to Hull in 1771. Here he continued his education at Pocklington School, earning a fine reputation for his skill as a poet and singer. From 1776, he studied at St John's College in New Court, Cambridge, and was initially horrified by the excesses of his fellow students, whom he described as a licentious set of men as can well be conceived. However, he was soon becoming immersed in student life, playing cards, gambling and late night drinking. Showing little inclination towards study, William's ability to concentrate was actually encouraged by his tutors, who deemed it unnecessary for a young man of wealth and expectations to work hard. During the 1780s, Wilberforce made an unusual impression on his peers. He suffered poor health, bad eyesight, and his small stooping figure attracted unfavourable comment. However, he was also known for his wit and charm, which helped to convert public opinion. He graduated in 1781 and obtained a master's degree in 1788. It was during this period that he formed a lifelong friendship with William Pitt. In later life, Pitt held several major offices of state from Chancellor and First Lord of the Treasury to Prime Minister. William had no wish to join the family business and opted for a political career. At the age of 21, he became MP for Hull, having spent £9,000 on securing the necessary votes. Between 1780 and 1784, he retained the independent Tory constituency, joining parliamentary debates on issues from shipbuilding to smuggling. Following the death of his uncle in 1777, William inherited Lauriston House near Wimbledon Common. This became his country seat and a popular destination for visitors such as William Pitt and his brother-in-law, James Elliot. The household became renowned for grand parties, noisy entertainments and practical jokes, much to the consternation of the neighbours. Despite his sometimes dissolute lifestyle, Wilberforce regarded Wimbledon as a place of rest and solitude, which helped to safeguard his morals and religious principles. As a member of the parish vestry, he was expected to play a part in local affairs and also assumed the role of treasurer of the tra tra local tra charity school. At the age of 21, William became one of the youngest MPs in parliamentary history. When Pitt became Prime Minister in 1738, Wilberforce was a key supporter, and in 1784 he was returned as MP for Yorkshire, proving a skilled backbencher noted for his eloquence and charm. In 1784 and 85, Wilberforce took the grand tour with Oxford Don and evangelical preacher Isaac Milner. They studied the New Testament, shared theological discussions, and prayed together whilst travelling around Italy and Switzerland. Wilberforce now looked back on his past life as worthless and devoted only to pleasure. Determined to dedicate himself to God and the pursuit of good causes, he sold his Wimbledon estate and threw himself into evangelical work and political reform. Through membership of the Clapham set, a set of evangelical Christians, and the influence of Lady Middleton of Kent, Wilberforce became interested in social reform. He was asked to join the campaign to abolish slavery and began actively lobbying Parliament to further this cause. He was greatly influenced by the social reformer Lady Diana Middleton of Teston in Kent and Thomas Clarkson, a leading figure in the anti-slavery movement, and sought to reveal the appalling conditions aboard slave ships. Despite ill health, William campaigned fiercely against the seizure of new slaves and tabled numerous motions in favour of abolition. Unfortunately, delaying tactics and intimidation by parliamentary opponents meant there was little progress. The 1791 slave rebellion in Dominica further hardened attitudes against abolition and Wilberforce was forced to undertake a lengthy campaign to try and get the subject debated in the House of Commons. Despite his energy and commitment, Parliament refused to pass a bill in favour of abolition. In 1797, William married Barbara Ann Spooner, having proposed just a fortnight after their first meeting. 
The couple married soon afterwards and had six children, four sons and two daughters, between 1798 and 1807. War with France assisted Wilberforce in his campaign to abolish slavery, not, because, not least because the French Emperor Napoleon was in favour of the slave trade. Nelson's victory at Trafalgar gave the British Navy dominance of the seas and the ability to enforce new laws, and the new Whig government included many strong opponents of slavery, notably Charles Fox, who supported the Wilberforce campaign in the Commons. In 1807, a bill was introduced to prevent British ships from trading in slaves. However, it did not free existing slaves. Between 1812 and 1825, Wilberforce served as MP for the small borough of Bramber and began actively campaigning for full slave emancipation. He combined his work with a drive to improve public morality in Britain, including a ban on gambling, Catholic emancipation and the reform of manners. In addition to his role as an anti-slavery campaigner, Wilberforce also championed a number of other causes. He was a driving force behind the Church Missionary Society and also founded the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, now better known as the RSPCA. By 1820, William's health was failing and he could not campaign with the same vigour. He therefore began to publish numerous pamphlets pressing for abolition. This led to the formation of the Anti-Slavery Society, which sought the freedom of slaves in all British colonies. Wilberforce resigned as an MP in 1825 following a serious illness. He continued an active correspondence and support for the anti-slavery campaign. And in July 1833, a bill to abolish slave trading in the British colonies was finally granted. Wilberforce died just three days later. In August 1833, Parliament passed a further act freeing slaves throughout the British Empire. William is commemorated in many parts of the UK from a monument in Westminster Abbey to statues in Hull. There's also a memorial plaque in Wimbledon Parish Church and a blue plaque on Southside in Wimbledon near the site of William's former home, Lauriston House. This property was demolished in 1958 and replaced by a housing development named Wilberforce Way. If you would like to know more about Merton's heritage, visit our Merton Memories website at www.merton.gov.uk forward slash memories. You can also find more information at Merton Heritage and Local Studies Centre, which is located on the second floor of Morden Library.